So prepping the new transmission is really straightforward and easy to do. So I will do that and then I'll bring you guys back up so we can install the new transmission. All right guys, so I got the new transmission on the jack. So now we're gonna install this new transmission on the vehicle. I said I was gonna install the neutral switch on this new transmission, but I decided to install it once the transmission is on the vehicle. Okay, so I'm going to remove this bracket that holds the torque converter. Once I get this off, then we will install this transmission. So right now I'm going to lower the vehicle so we can get this transmission installed. All right, so right now I'm going to start to jack up the transmission. So right there, as you can see, the transmission is going up. So we're going to push it forward a little bit. So you got to make sure that the transmission is cleared and there's nothing in the way because you don't want anything to get caught up between the transmission and the engine block. So right there, I'm watching it as it's going up. So as you can see, I'm jacking up the transmission. I'm making sure that the transmission is lined up with the engine, okay? Once everything is lined up, we're gonna go up around the bell housing and put the bolts on. Once we get the bolts started, everything else should be easy, okay? So I'm gonna push the transmission forward just a little bit. So right there, the transmission is lined up with the engine so it's parallel to the engine right now so the holes on the transmission and the holes on the engine block are also lined up so we're gonna push it forward a little bit more so now I'm going to go around the bell housing and put bolts on these holes over here so now we're gonna put the bolts that hold the transmission on the engine block alright so I'm gonna put this bolt over here So this bolt is going to go right there. And then we're going to put another one up here. All right, so everything is lined up. I got the bolts on the holes over here. Now we have to make sure that the torque converter is lined up. So the torque converter studs are going through the holes on the flex plate. So everything over here looks lined up. So that's good. I'm gonna bring you guys over here so I can show you what I'm looking at before we start tightening this bolt. We're also gonna go on the other side and put the bell housing bolts on the passenger side. So I'm going to slide on the passenger side and put a bolt over here. I mean, you guys won't see, but just take my word for it. I'm putting another bolt in place. All right, so I'm gonna bring you guys over here so we can tighten these bolts. The transmission is against the block. The bolt is on and we got it started. So that's good. There's another bolt above here. I don't know if you can see it, but I also got it on. And I also went to the passenger side and I also got the bell housing bolts on the passenger side started. So that's good. Now, there is the torque converter studs back here. So I had to make sure that these torque converter studs were lined up with the holes on the flex plate. So as you can see, so the torque converter right there is lined up and everything looks good so there are the studs for the torque converter okay so everything is good 
So now we can start tightening this bolt. So we're gonna use our electric ratchet to tighten this bolt. Okay, so we're gonna go on the other side and do the same thing. All right, so we are on the passenger side. I already got this bolt installed. So now we're gonna tighten this one. All right, that, that's... All right, so that's tightened. Well, we got two bolts on, on the transmission. So we got two bell housing bolts installed. So at this point, the transmission is already mounted against the engine block. So it's not gonna go anywhere. So now the next step would be installing the cross member. So we're gonna go to the back of the transmission and then we're gonna install the cross member. So once we install the cross member, the transmission's weight is gonna be taken off the jack. So at that point, we will be able to remove the jack. Once we take the jack out, then we will have enough room to work around the transmission, okay? So now let's go to the back of the transmission and install the cross member. All right, so now I'm gonna install the cross member. So the cross member is gonna go over here. All right, so I'm gonna put the nut for the transmission mount. Alright, so I got the bolt for the cross member on this side on. So I'm gonna put the knife over here. So I'll show you these bolts that I'm installing in a few. So now let's go to the passenger side. All right, so I got all the bolts for the cross member installed. So now we're gonna tighten them. I got those nuts started, and those are the nuts for the transmission mount. And I also got these nuts here started. So now let's tighten them. We're gonna tighten the ones on this side first. Let's go to the other one. So that's good. So now let's go to the ones on the passenger side. So here are the ones on the passenger side. So we're gonna tighten these two. So that's good. We're gonna have to use a wrench to tighten the one up there. So that's good. So now we're gonna lower the transmission jack. I'm gonna lower the jack so that we can get the transmission's weight on the cross member. So I'm gonna lower the jack. So right there, so the jack is removed. As you can see, the transmission is installed. So at this point, I'm gonna raise up the vehicle with the lift and then we will start putting everything back together. Putting everything back together is the reverse process of the removal process. So I'm gonna lift up the vehicle so we can put everything back together. All right guys, so I got the vehicle up in the air, so now let's continue putting everything back together. I wanted to show you this tall jack. So this is the tall transmission jack that I usually use, but I didn't use this because I'm here by myself. So I preferred using the floor jack, which is easier to use than using this tall jack. This jack is a lot better to use, but this one usually requires two people to install a transmission. So since I installed this transmission by myself, that's why I used the floor jack. So now let's go under the vehicle and put everything back together.
All right, so we're gonna start by tightening the cross member bolts first. Because these ones have to be tight. They support the transmission's weight. So these bolts have to be tight. And if you want the torque spec for these bolts, the torque spec for these bolts is 80 foot pound. All right, so that's good. So now let's go to the passenger side. So we're gonna tighten this one now. So that's tightened. So now we're gonna tighten the second one. All right, so that's tightened. So that's good to go. So now we're gonna tighten these nuts for the transmission mount. All right, so we're gonna tighten these. All right, so we have tightened the nuts for the transmission mount. So now the next step will be tightening the bolts around the bell housing. So now let's go up there and tighten the bolts around the bell housing. Alright, so we have tightened these two bell housing bolts. So we're still missing two more bolts up there above the transmission. But those ones are pretty easy to do. We're going to do those once we lower the vehicle. And then we're going to go inside the vehicle to tighten those. So I actually haven't put them on yet. So if these holes here are lined up, the ones up there will automatically be lined up. So this is tightened. So now let's go to the passenger side and tighten the bell housing bolt on the passenger side. This passenger side here is really tight. There's the exhaust pipe on the way. So this is really, really tight. So I can't really show you. So I'm, I'm going to tighten this bolt over here. So as you can see, it's tight. So I've tightened that one. So we're good. So now I'm going to show you what we're going to do next. So after tightening the bell housing bolt, the next step is going to be installing the torque converter nuts. And as you can see, the torque converter studs are sticking out on the other side of the flex plate. So that's good. So now we're going to install this nut. Now, the trick with this is that when you install the transmission, you have to make sure that the transmission is parallel to the engine. You have to make sure it's straight and you have to raise it up to a level where the holes on the transmission and the holes on the engine block are totally lined up. Once everything is lined up, you're gonna push it forward and then you have to come over here and also make sure that these studs are also lined up. I mean, the studs on the torque converter are lined up with the holes on the flex plate. So that's what I did, and then I pushed everything forward, everything was lined up. So, just like that. Now, let's put the second nut on. All right, so once you get these nuts started, you don't wanna tighten them yet. You wanna spin the torque converter and install all the nuts before you tighten them. And as you can see, I'm able to move the torque converter, so the torque converter is free, okay? So, we got these two nuts started, so now we're gonna spin the engine so we can get to the other studs. All right, so I'm gonna start spinning the engine. So we got one stud over here, so I'm gonna install the nut. So we got this one tightened. All right, so we got the second one tightened. So I'll keep tightening the rest of them and then I'll bring you guys back up once I'm down to the last one. All right, so now we're down to the last nut. So we're gonna tighten this one. All right, so this nut is tightened. So now the next step is gonna be installing the torque converter cover. So now let's get this cover installed.
right, so the torque converter cover is installed. So now the next step is gonna be installing the neutral safety switch. This neutral safety switch has a little notch over here. There's one on the bottom and another one up top. So these two notches will slide on this slot over here. There's a slot on the bottom and there's another slot over here on this selector shaft. So the way we're gonna install this is we have to push the lever all the way to the back of the vehicle. So when you go all the way to the back, so this here is the park position, okay? So if you push the lever all the way to the back, you will feel a spring action here, okay? It's like there's a spring that pushes the lever back forward, right there. So this is how you know that the transmission is in park. Okay, so this is park. And then we're gonna push it forward one notch. So that's reverse. And then the next one will be neutral. So that's neutral right there. So we're gonna leave that in neutral. We're gonna apply a little bit of anti-seize compound on this shaft. This will make it easier to remove the neutral safety switch the next time this safety switch will be removed. So that's good. Now we're gonna slide the safety switch in, okay? So now, since it's in neutral, there is a line over here on the switch and this yellow sleeve, I don't know if you can see it, but right over here, you see this mark? Let me move it so you can see the difference. You see right there? So there is this line over here and this line on the body of the switch. So this one and this one. So you have to make sure that these two are lined up while the transmission is in neutral. And it actually says neutral over here. Okay, so this is lined up right there. So make sure you push it all the way. So when the transmission is in neutral, these two marks over here have to line up. So this is kind of a timing mark for this switch. So every time the transmission is in neutral, these two marks here have to line up, okay? If they don't line up, the engine will not start, okay? So you have to make sure that this is timed, or these marks are lined up in neutral. So that's good. So now we're gonna put the bolts for the neutral safety switch. All right, so you just wanna tighten these nice and snug. They are eight millimeter bolts, so they're really tiny. You don't wanna break them. So that's good. So now let's go back to park. So reverse, park. So this is the park position. So when we go back to the neutral position, these marks over here have to be lined up. So right there, neutral. As you can see, these two marks are lined up. So that's good to go, okay? So now the next step will be installing the shifter cable. So now let's install the shifter cable. All right, so I'm gonna put this little plastic piece on the shifter lever first. So right there. So now let's install our shifter cable. All right, so I got the boards for the shifter cable bracket installed. So we're gonna install this side on the shifter lever, okay. So then we're gonna hook this up. It's right there. So now we're gonna tighten these two 15 millimeter bolts. All right, so the bolt for the shifter cable bracket are tightened. So now we're gonna adjust the cable. So you have to make sure that the transmission is in park so as you can see, the transmission is, is in park right now. And the vehicle, the shifter on the steering column is also in park. So that's good. So now what we're gonna do is we gotta make sure that there isn't enough, I mean, there isn't a lot of slack on the shifter cable, okay? 
So you kind of just want this yellow piece here to be centered, okay? And then we're gonna install the lock. So you want this yellow piece over here to be centered on this slot over here. So this slot, you want the yellow piece to be centered right there. Okay, so right there. So now let's install this locking piece. So we're gonna install it. So right there. So there isn't enough slack over here because if there's a lot of slack over here, your shifter position on the steering column will be off. So instead of showing park, it's gonna be between park and reverse. So you have to make sure that there isn't a lot of slack over here. Okay, so that's good. So now we're gonna go to the other side of the transmission so we can install the transmission cooler lines. I'm gonna remove these blue caps over here on the transmission. Now, I don't know if I had mentioned this, but I replaced the transmission oil cooler. So I'm not gonna put replacing the transmission cooler in this video, okay? So you won't see that, but just so you know, if you are replacing your transmission, you also have to replace your transmission oil cooler or maybe flash it because all the metal shavings or the metal chunks from the old transmission might be caught up in the transmission cooler and if you don't replace it it can ruin your new transmission so that's we're good there i did replace the transmission cooler so now we're going to install the transmission cooler lines so we're going to install this fitting over here first All right, so right there. So I'm gonna grab a wrench so we can tighten this. All right, so this line is tightened. So now we're gonna install this one back here. All right, so this one here is tightened. So now the next step is gonna be reconnecting the electrical connectors around the transmission. We're gonna reconnect this one up here, the neutral safety switch and the Vico speed sensor. So now let's feed the harness up here so we can reconnect these electrical connectors. All right, so we're gonna feed this harness through. So this is gonna go above the transmission. So this is gonna go on the main connector of the valve body. So this is gonna go this way. So now we're gonna connect the electrical connector of the neutral safety switch. So right there, I hope you heard that snap. So now we're gonna reconnect the Vico speed sensor. So this is gonna go up there and this connector is gonna go this way. So right there, so. So right there, so that's connected. So let's go to the other side of the transmission. So over here, we're gonna connect the main electrical connector of the valve body. So right there. So I hope you heard that snap. 
So that's connected. So now we're gonna install this little shield over here that protects the electrical connector. All right, guys, so as you can see, we are making progress slowly and surely. So everything is coming back together. So this electrical connector is gonna go up there. So right there, so that's connected. So we are good to go. So now the next step is gonna be installing the drive shaft. So now we're gonna install the drive shaft. All right, so we're gonna install the drive shaft. So the slip yoke is gonna slide right in there. Alright, so now I'm going to tighten this bolt. The torque spec for this bolt is 55 foot pound. So let's tighten these. We're going to tighten them at 55 foot pound. All right, so these bolts are tightened. So now we're gonna double check everything under the vehicle before we lower it. All right, guys, so we installed the drive shaft. Everything is tightened. So everything is back together. Now we're just gonna double check everything around the transmission before we lower the vehicle. So the shifter cable is on. The electrical connectors are connected. So everything looks good on this side. So let's go to the passenger side. Our transmission and cooler lines are connected. So we have that bolt on. So everything is back on. So we are good to go under the vehicle. All right, so now we're gonna lower the vehicle. Then we're gonna install the bolt on top of the bell housing. And then we're gonna put transmission fluid in the transmission and then we'll take this for a spin. So now let's lower the vehicle. All right guys, so now we're gonna install these two bell housing bolts that we haven't installed yet. So here are the bolts. And we already tightened this bolt over here when we were under the vehicle. So we tightened this one and we also tightened this one over here, okay? So once we tighten these two, then we will put transmission fluid inside the transmission. So another side note over here, I did put a new O-ring on the dipstick tube. So there is an O-ring that goes between this tube and the small tube on the transmission. So I replaced the O-ring, so here's the old one. I put a new O-ring there. So now we're gonna slide the dipstick tube on the tube that's on the transmission. So we're gonna push that down. So right there, so that's on. So the bolt is gonna go right over here. And then the other bolt is gonna go here. So the dipstick tube is installed. So now we're gonna tighten these bolts.
All right, so we've tightened the last two bolts on the bell housing. So now we're gonna install the engine cover. After we install the engine cover, we will put transmission fluid in the transmission and then we're gonna take this for a spin. So now let's install the engine cover. So this is gonna go right over here. Alright, so the engine cover is installed, so now we're going to install the steering column cover, so this is going to go over here. Alright, so as you can see, we are making progress. The engine cover is installed, the steering column cover is also installed so we got everything back together inside the vehicle so now let's go outside under the hood so we can fill up the transmission with transmission fluid our friends at Glen Burnie transmission sent us some mobile one transmission fluid so we're gonna put this funnel over here on the dipstick tube so now let's put transmission fluid in the transmission Alright, so I'm going to keep filling up the transmission and then I'll bring you guys back up once I'm done filling up the transmission with transmission fluid. Alright guys, so I'm done filling up the transmission with transmission fluid. So now we're going to check the fluid level with the dipstick and see where our level is at. If it's low, we're going to add more. If it's normal, we're going to leave it at 7 quarts first. Then we're going to start the engine and let it reach operating temperature once the engine reaches operating temperature then we're going to check the transmission fluid again if it needs more then we will add more because i have i have two quarts left over here okay so i'm going to pull the dipstick out let's check the level with the dipstick i mean you guys won't be able to see the dipstick so i'll just tell you what the level is Alright, so you guys probably won't be able to see, but right now with 7 quarts, the fluid level is all the way to the full mark. So this is good. I'm not going to add any more fluid. I want to start it first and let it reach operating temperature because the pump is going to have to pump the fluid through the new fluid cooler. And then it's going to go to the torque converter and fill up the torque converter. And then we're gonna turn it off and check the fluid level. If it needs more, then we will add. We're also gonna go through all the gears while we have the vehicle on the lift before we take it out for a spin. So now I'm gonna go inside the vehicle and start the engine.
good. I added one quart of camera, so right now the fluid level is good to go. So now let's take this vehicle for a spin. I'm gonna turn off the engine so we can get the vehicle off the lift and then we will drive out of the shop. So we're gonna come to a complete stop over here. So the vehicle drives very well. I like the way it shifts. Everything is good. There are no lights on the dash. So we are good to go. So now I'm gonna drive back to the shop. Once I get to the shop, I'll bring you guys back up so we can wrap up this video. So I'm gonna turn off the camera. I will drive to the shop and then I'll bring you guys back up once I get to the shop. So, see you guys at the shop. All right guys, so we are back at the shop. This vehicle is fixed. The vehicle drives well, the transmission shifts fine. So this vehicle is good to go. So I'm gonna leave this video right over here. This is how you remove and replace a transmission on this Ford E350 with the 7.3 diesel. I hope you like this video. If you do like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you don't, give it a thumb down. But if you do, you gotta tell me why so we can make better videos in the future. If this is your first time here, subscribe to the channel. Ring the bell so you can get notified every time I upload a new video. If you have any comments, questions, criticism, leave them in the comment box. Thanks for watching guys. See you next time.